If we cut off your head and we cut off my head and tried this trick, our heads would react differently because our skulls are completely differently shaped. What we'd really like is to know what 10 people with heads like yours and 10 people with heads like mine would have happened to them. And this method of essentially building models of every head allows you to do that. Somewhere on the Great Barrier Reef, I met my first biologist, and I was collecting fish for him. My name is Adam Summers. I'm an associate professor at the University of Washington and the associate director of the University of Washington's Friday Harbor Laboratories. I, I was the really scary loner kid who took everything apart, put it back together again, and spent a lot of time in the woods looking at animals. I was, I was born to be the kind of biologist I am, and I just didn't know that comparative biomechanics was a field. And so it took me five years after graduating from college to realize that I actually needed to take some biology courses and become a biology professor. So I became a bum. I actually taught scuba diving in Australia for a couple of years. And somewhere, somewhere on the Great Barrier Reef, I met my first biologist. And I was collecting fish for him. And I said, why do you need these things? And he said, well, I'm interested in how the gonads develop with the changing phases of the moon after I've removed a dominant fish from the group. I said, what kind of a job is that? And he said, it's, it's a biology job. I'm a biologist. I said, but who do you work for? He said, University of Lund. So, so what part's the job part? <laughs> and so I came back to the States and had a very difficult time persuading a graduate school that a guy with absolutely no biology, I didn't have one course, needed a PhD in biology. Comparative biomechanics is one of those fields at the interface. And what we're doing is applying very simple Newtonian mechanics, simple optics to living systems. Because I'm interested in how sharks swim fast. And well, the short story is this. It turns out that the skin of a mako shark is very thick and inextensible. The, th the skin of bony fishes, you know from eating bony fishes, is relatively thin stuff. When we put a shark in a flume, which is sort of a treadmill for, for fishes, it swims in place, and we stick pressure transducers in its muscles, as the fish swims faster, that inextensible skin means that the pressure inside the animal goes up. And so if you increase the pressure in a sausage with the skin that can't expand, it becomes stiffer. So as the fish swims faster, it stiffens up and becomes better at swimming fast. When, when I look at, at animals doing their thing, I see the same kinds of things that I see when I take apart a washing machine that isn't working. I mean, I see a series of parts that all fit together in order to perform a function, and it's very much something that I, I enjoy deconstructing and reconstructing and trying to understand the evolution of these kinds of complex systems. I'm done looking at that. <laughs>